Hello, my name is Collier Cloinger, also known as Coach Cloinger, and the kids call me Coach Cloak just because Cloinger doesn't roll off the tongue that good, and that's that's okay. Um, I'm a first year teacher here uh, at Airline High School. I teach social studies, U.S. history, and world geography to be uh, exact. So I'm teaching freshmen, sophomores, juniors. Um, I love teaching. Uh, it's fantastic. Didn't realize how much I love teaching. I think teaching is not about uh, imparting knowledge, it's about inspiring minds and nurturing dreams. Uh, I tell my kids all the time, I don't remember 80%, maybe 70% about the things my teachers told me uh, to do, uh, the lessons they taught. However, I do remember how they made me feel, how they pushed me to be the things I wanted to be. If I wanted to be a, a movie star they would do that if they wanted to be a teacher they they expressed how much uh confidence they had in me and that's kind of what i give back to my kids so many kids i hear that they don't have a uh a uh, positive uh mind a positive voice in their in their uh, lives and no matter the day i'm feeling i want to be that positive voice if, even if it's from a high five to a hello to hey how are you doing you doing okay that's something i just strive to be i strive to always keep a smile on my face regardless of what the kids are are saying or doing whatever uh in life is happening i heard it from a, a veteran teacher and it caught me by i, I really like it she said leave your life at at the at the car door whatever you're dealing with at the car door leave it there these kids need everything of me so i give my kids a hundred percent not 99 percent but a hundred percent because that's what they deserve so today in today's lesson we're going to be talking about uh you're going to see the lessons in world geography for my freshmen uh, we just got done talking about um, europe so we're going to go over to russia kind of talking about their government the things that they need to know like our foreign affairs with them uh, today we're going to be doing a PowerPoint, uh, you'll see it in a little bit, and then you're going to see them do some vocabs, and then at the very end we're going to play a little video about Berlin Wall, and then we're going to do a little review at the very end after the video, just kind of get the, kind of get a ground and kind of get an understanding what the kids are understanding and what they're not understanding. So here we go, we're going to start. Y'all like my new slides? No. Who they look I did. I just a new man. New man, new me. Huh? Thank you. So, Russia is the world's largest country by area. Look, this is Europe. We just talked about Europe, right? Yeah. We just took a test on it. Yeah. I know, Thanksgiving. This is Russia. Okay? This is China. They make up Asia. Okay? Look how much easier it is to fill in. Look at y'all gonna be so happy. Hey, look here. Look, I'm learning. Okay, my fault. I don't have all the details. I'm, look here. It's new. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. I know. All right, here we go. Its population is 144.1 million. 144, that is a lot, 144.1 million people. <laughs> it lies on how many continents? Two. Two, two Sebastian. Wait, what? It lies on two continents, Asia and Europe. Russia's formal name is, in the, uh, is the Russian Federation. It is also known as the former Soviet Union. So hopefully when... Y'all become juniors. I get to see y'all's lovely faces again in U.S. history. And we'll talk about it. We'll talk about Cold War. So this means like everybody in the family, right? So if you're a woman, are you going to die if you're a part of this family? Yes, you were, you were executed. Okay, so Tsar Nicholas II and his family lived in the extravagant Winter Palace. I would love to live in a place called the Winter Palace. That's just me, though. Yeah, that's just you, cause it's cold in whatever outside. I don't want to live nothing that says winter, cause I know it's gonna be cold. So what if it said summer palace? No, it's I need spring. I need fall. No, there's gonna be a pool in the end of the day. Yep, yep. I want some summer palace. I need right in between. I can't swim. Coach Cole, you can swim. You don't even want to take that one. No. That's very true. Very true. 
So the people resented the royal family because they lived in poverty, right? So the royal family is living great. They're having these extravagant parties. They're basically flaunting their success, right? Uh, I was about to say that. However, the people they are ruling, they are broke. They're poor. They're, as y'all say, in the trenches. I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay. Myla. Yes. So, Myla brings up a good point. She was like, is it like the French Revolution? Yes. Mar uh, Marie Antoinette, remember she said, let them eat cake, right? It was a whole big ordeal. She, she, they ended up the same way as, however, this was before. They, yeah. Um, yeah, so would you be upset if your leader is living, is being successful while everyone, I mean, everyone is living in poverty? <laughs> it's not that, it's not that. Huh? You have to be happy for somebody. Oh, like Ariana, look at you. <laughs> In a communist country, the government is all powerful. They take all control, right? So we do not have that type of government, right? Right? Um, what is our what is our style of government? Yes, representative democracy, right? We pick people to vote for us. However, in a communist country, it's not like that. It's kind of like whatever we say goes. Huh? No, yeah, like it's, it's our way or the highway, right? You're going to accept what we want. So, huh? Is China a communist country? Yes, China is a communist country. We ready? <laughs> Are we good? RJ, you're staring with intense focus. Are you ready? Okay. Myla, read it. Yes. The Cheka. Bolshevik secret police. Right? Like a secret service. Right? Like maybe spies. I don't think they'd sit in your wall, but you know, it's like kind of like undercover. Right? Well, I mean, you're trying to catch people in the act. It's a whole ordeal. Oh, come on. You don't watch crime shows? First 48 is good. That's a good, that's a good show. Collectivization. Ooh. Who wants to read? Me. Carmen said it first. Go ahead, read, Carmen. How do you, how do you collectivization? Collectivization, yes. When all a country's <laughs> agriculture production is owned by the government. Yeah. You should also read the next one, Um, Unless Kamaya wants to, because Kamaya said, me. After Once y'all get done writing. I'm, I'm, mm. huh? Oh. Oh, Cameron's gonna read, and so are you, Abel? Gulag. It's not what you're thinking in Call of Duty. No. So to remove a group of undesirable people in an abrupt or violent way. So this is not your like. Come on, let's get out the door. All right. Come on. Or you're go, you're going away. No, it's like violent. I y'all want me to show you my violent skills? No. Yeah. 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 Come on. I, I have to stretch. Give me give me two give me two give me two slides while I stretch. Alright, I'll show you my violent way to, to kick people out of a classroom. No, I did not. No, I did not. I said you had told somebody on this side of the class to read. You're right. No, don't choose me. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I'm choosing you now. Armani! Oh. oh, you're not done? Hold on. Oh. Bolsheviks. Armani, read. She's Bolsheviks. Revolutionary Russia. Marxist. Marxist. Who seized control of Russia in 1970. Good. The Cold War. We're talking about in U.S. history right now. 
The Cold War is basically a war without the military, right? It was basically a... So, basically it's called a Cold War because nothing ever happened. Like, we never went and uh, attacked each other, right? Because... Alright, little ho ho, I can't wait. Here we go. Bingo, yes. Hust hostile threats. So at this time, right, we blew up Hiroshima and Nagasaki to end World War II. Right, so we have nuclear weapons. Fun fact, Russia is starting to have nuclear weapons. I'm getting out of the way. Right, so if Russia has nuclear weapons and then we have nuclear weapons and Russia is definitely not afraid to drop them, right? Uh, nuclear weapons cause mass destruction, right? Mass destruction, right? There's no uh, mass chaos, pretty much. So if two of the biggest uh, countries in the world, uh, economically and like military size, things of that nature, power. Uh, if both of them are saying, I'll blow you up, no, I'll blow you up. Well, you do it first. Well, I'll do it first. You do it first. Huh? Well, I'm, it's talking about the war. Easy. Is this your phone? Berlin has special status. In the middle of East Germany, the city is divided into four sectors at the end of World War II. In 1961, the western sectors are surrounded by a fort. Berlin Wall. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's nothing like, it's nothing really like fun to talk about, right? Like, it was obviously a Go big deal. <laughs> Go back to the, no, we're not going to do that. No, right? <laughs> like, I mean, it's, it's a wall that separated like two different types of living, right? We have the communist side, and then we have the democratic side. Uh, families are separated. So imagine like your grandparents or your favorite aunt or uncle living on the opposite side of the wall. Remember, there's no text messages. There's no Snapchat. There's no Instagram. There's no direct messages. There's no TikTok. Yes, it's like guarded like that. But it's like, I'm talking like, like high up there. Like it's, it's, oh, it's taller than that. It's probably about, I think it was like nine to 10 feet on average, right? And then barbed wire, or barbed wire on top of that, huh? Oh ten feet? Mine's ten feet. Okay. It's it's three. All right, we good? We got it. We understand everything. We're good, solid. So when we take a test on this tomorrow, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. When we go to take a test, we got this. I'll take it with you, cause I make the test. <laughs> So today I thought the lesson went good. I, I really liked the classroom engagement. I was a little nervous about it because it's Russia and these kids, are, if it's not in the United States, they really, it's hard for them to get engaged. However, I thought they did a fantastic job. One of the things I was thinking about as the, the kids were leaving, uh, at the end of the video, I had a kid ask me, he was like, I feel like I could. I feel like I could jump the Berlin Wall. And I'm like, okay, sure dude, go. <laughs> the heavily guarded barbed wire, whatever you think, man. And I was thinking, uh, I even may do it tomorrow. I may put a line, I may put a wall. I can get a, maybe even I can get students to act as a wall and make this side uh, democratic and this side social, socialist. And I could have their seating chart where the kids there, they know really well and put them over there. Or I could say, hey, get by your best friends today, and then they get by their buddies, and then Wednesday comes, and they're separated. And I, I've been, that's how they felt. And then they'll understand, oh, this is how they felt during the Berlin Wall, or, or the Cold War, like, a, and just, that's been my, one of the biggest things I'm trying to work on as a, uh, a new teacher, is how can I be a better teacher? How can I keep rising up to be, eventually when I'm like five, 10, 15 years, how can I be better than the year I was uh, before? Thank you all for, uh, for listening. I hope you all find the lesson interesting and exciting. Uh, I wanted to just take a moment and tell you all thank you all so much for giving me this opportunity to, to be in this situation, to be a new teacher of the year. There was a lot of candidates I could have been in this situation and I'm very thankful and fortunate to, to be here, to be the new teacher of the year at Airline. I look forward to, to this competition, to, to see where I'm at at the end. And at the end of the day, as long as I keep growing, as long as I keep inspiring these kids to be better uh, people, to be better students, uh, I'll be happy. Thank y'all.